Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. It's review time. I've been sent some samples of a couple of products from IT Studio. And what I have is what is called a Sonoff and a Slamfer, or more specifically, a smart home on off switch, which is the one on the top left here, and the S Lamp. HER, which is this one on the bottom right. Fundamentally, they work in the same way. They both have a Wi-Fi um, inside it using an ESP8266 type Wi-Fi communications processor, and they also have a 433 megahertz radio receiver, so you can control them from, say, a key fob or something like that. And I have one of each of these devices, and I'm going to show you them working on the bench in a moment, and we'll open them up and have a look inside and everything as well. The first one, which is the um, smart home on off switch, can control anything from about 90 odd volts up to uh, 220, 240 volts. So it's good for North America, it's good for Europe, and it will also drive up to 10 amps and it uses a relay inside to do the switching. The lamp adapter is good for up to 2 amps, so it would handle, uh, in North America, a 200 watt lamp roughly. In the UK, basically be more closer to a 500 watt lamp, and it uses a solid state switch for that one. The programming is very, very simple for the, and to use them with the Wi-Fi, it, you have to configure them to go out on your network out to a cloud server that is hosted for free by ITEAD Studio. You just have to sign up, uh, provide a smartphone or something as a number, and um, away you go. So I will actually take you through that process and show you how you do it too. They are extremely inexpensive. So uh, you're talking, you know, less than $10 for either one of them. Let me just flip to the website and show you. So this is the Sonoff. They're actually selling it on their website, itstudio.cc. Uh, and uh, you can, as you can see here, it's just under $5. That would be US. And uh, what I have a sample version, so the label is slightly different to what's on here. But functionally, it's the same unit. It'll go up to 10 amps. I think this one is a 5 amp uh, version. Yep. And there is a 10 amp one, which is the one that they have currently running on Indiegogo for uh, crowdfunding. And they're also creating an online uh, cloud service and application that can run on your smartphone to be able to control these. So if I go to the Indiegogo site here and just shrink down a bit, you can actually see. Um, Basically, you can get a, the lamp fitting for $5. Um, you can get the mains power one, the Sonoff one, for $7 US plus shipping. And it comes with a controller. Now, the controller is often, you can use your smartphone, of course, but you can also use something like this uh, key fob, which comes as well. It's got four buttons on, so you can control up to four devices to, with it. And it is very, very simple to pair it with the device you've got. And once it's paired, unless you have physical access to either the lamp or the power switch, you can't repair it with something else. Um, and obviously with the Indiegogo crowdfunding, there's about two weeks left on it. Um, as of today, I think there's 15 days left. Let's go have a quick look. Uh, yep, 15 days left. So they're about 20% to their goal of 20,000. So if you're interested in this, this is a good opportunity to get a hold of some. And I'm going to show you how they're built. I've already had a look inside, and I'm actually quite impressed with the build quality of these. And you can get a few, you know, just get one of them, get a few of them. And IT Studio are working very diligently to try and improve the software that runs the UI uh, for the smart devices and you know they're as I said they're providing the cloud service and everything else and the application uh, with the cloud service allows you to also schedule uh, on off times for the devices for most people that don't have the wherewithal to update firmware and uh, or would want to take things apart they just want to be able to screw them in and work with them after a simple piece of configuration then these things are just what you're looking for I've you know I've looked at many many devices before and I haven't been too impressed with them. They're either not very safe or uh, they haven't been too reliable or anything like that. And so far what I'm seeing with these, they are pretty good. Anyway, uh, enough of the um, sales pitch or what sounds like a sales pitch. Let's um, pop back onto the bench and let's check out the real thing. So these are what the devices look like. What we have is these are the sample ones I got. The As you saw on the 
uh, intro there, the labels have obviously been improved for the actual production products and the color has changed from green to orange. But nevertheless, these are still functionally exactly the same units. So this physically is the uh, lamp adapter. And as you can see, it's a screw fitting lamp adapter. I don't know if they're gonna be doing any other ones, but this is what I have. And this is perfectly suitable for the North American market. There's a little black button on the bottom that you can press to locally turn on and off the unit. And if you press it twice, you can actually use it to uh, go into pairing mode and things like that. And you can also use it by pressing the button, you can initiate a uh, Wi-Fi sync as well. So you use your smartphone and you would press it, you'd pair it with the smartphone and then provide it the information to connect to your local Wi-Fi so it can get out on the internet to the cloud service. So this is truly going to let you work sort of as an internet of things kind of device. The Sonoff smart home on off control. This is basically a little, uh, effectively a brick that you can mount somewhere. Again, 90 volts, 250 volts, but this one is rated at 10 amp. And there's a button underneath the label here, basically the similar functionality as the lamp fitting for pairing and locally turning it on and off. And this one also has an LED here that can indicate, um, seems to indicate when it's running on the 430 33 megahertz receiving a signal and pairing and things for that. The last thing that you can get is this nice um, metal key fob. So it's got four buttons on it, A, B, C, and D. The uh, A and B are large buttons and the C and D are a little bit smaller and they basically work as a toggle action. So you press it and uh, turn the device on, you press it again and you turn it off. So anyway, how do you hook these things up? Well, they couldn't be any simpler. Um, let's do the lamp first. So what I have here, I've just took apart one of my workshop lamps a little bit so I can access the uh, standard screw fitting. This is a standard um, compact fluorescent lamp, so I'm just going to use this for the testing. Uh, I don't have uh, something handy that's going to test it up to uh, several hundred watts because pretty much all my house has been converted to use LEDs. Anyway, all you do is you just unscrew your existing lamp fitting screw this in. Now, of course, some lamp fittings this may not screw into because it's so wide. Uh, it also adds, you know, uh, uh, three inches or more. All you do anyway is you just screw it in and then just screw your fitting, your, sorry, your lamp or whatever it is, you know, your bulb back in the end. And now that's it. Now, when I turn this on, of course, it's not going to work right away because it's now got the remote control in the way. So now that it's powered on, I just have to push the button and it will turn on. I can push it locally again and turn it off. But of course, that's not really what we want to do. So if you just press the black button really, really quickly, twice, then it goes into learning mode with the remote control. So now with the key fob, if I just press the A for a few seconds and then let go, all right, now it's taken the A. The lamp's actually come on because I probably held it a little bit longer than I should have done. But now when I press the A button, sorry, you have to hold it for a few seconds. It, it won't let you turn it on and off from a quick press. So you just press it and hold it for a few seconds and it will turn on. The fluorescence is a little slow to come on as well. Press and hold it again, turn it off. Press and hold it again, turn it on and off. Now, if I wanted to make it work on a different button, all I've got to do is press the button twice again on the uh, lamp itself. And if I now press the B button on here and hold that for a few seconds, and then let go, all right, it comes on. Um, now if I press the B and hold it, I can turn it off and on. But now if I press the A, it won't respond because I've now transferred the functionality to the B button. So for the smart device control, basically the Wi-Fi control, um, obviously you need to have a smartphone. I happen to have an Android device, but you can also download for iOS as well. So those of you with an iPhone, it will also work equally well. So start up your device. And what you need to look for in the store is a program called eWink. Um, so it's called eWink, E-W-E-L-I-N-K, eWeLink. And you can just download it. It's free, so there's no issues with that or anything. And once you've downloaded and installed it, then you just need to fire up the application. And I'm just going to bring, just jump back to hit. There's a plus button on here. And what you do is you initiate the device 
by pressing, now this is plugged in, so I'm just going to handle it a little more carefully, by pressing and holding for a longer duration of time, so it's not two quick presses, that's for pairing with the um, 433 MHz device, and of course one press just turns it on and off, but if you want to pair the Wi-Fi, you have to press it and hold it for a longer time, so just count to five seconds or something like that, before I let go, oh, actually till I found it. So now it's found the device. You can see here it's configured IT-1000, IT then a part of a serial number. I've made up a temporary network connection here, and I'm going to edit out the password for my network. But you need to pick a network, and it doesn't like having... One of the things I discovered is it doesn't like having spaces in the network name. So you just pull the drop-down down, and I'm going to pick my Oaks Clan Home. And then I'm going to put in a password. You can tell it to remember it and then just hit start and it'll start syncing up and connecting the device. Now it's connected quite quickly so you can go in here and you can name it to whatever you like. So let's just call this one um, LAMP. Okay and once you put the name in you can just hit next and it will register the device and there's LAMP. Now initially it's offline because it needs to wait for the actual Wi-Fi ESP device in the LAMP unit to go off onto the cloud service and get connected. So now it's just changed state there. So if I go into LAMP now, all right, it's identifying itself as the uh, S-LAMP HER Pro. And now I should be able to just simply control it from here. So I press on and voila, it's coming on. And just to make sure I'm not playing any tricks, all right? So on and off now through the lamp. And if I turn my Wi-Fi off on my phone, so that it's not actually using the Wi-Fi, so there I've turned it off. And so now I'm connecting through my uh, cell network. As you can see, it's still working very quickly. That's going over the cell network now, so it's going out to the internet, to the cloud service and it's coming back within less than a second when I'm telling it to turn on and off. Now I've turned it off here and watch when I take the remote, I can't remember which button I put it on to, I think it's on B now, and if I press on, see how the lamp display here, right here and here, has turned green. So it's actually updating the cloud service and therefore the smart device with the status of the uh, lamp as well. So that's pretty cool and it's pretty fast. Okay, so this is the S on off sample that I got. Now they, they call it, I mean, you, I guess you could call it Sonoff. This one is rated, as I said, 90 volts, 250 volts at 10 amps. And this is a sample one. So the label is better on the ones that you'll get from the production run. So I have a bigger panel, which takes a little more wattage um, to connect to this. So what I have here is a big two foot by two foot, um, 40 odd watt LED panel. I've got a little power supply here. So I'm connecting to the mains through this adapter, or will be, into the um, Sonoff, and then out to the power supply. And that will control this LED panel, turning it on and off through the remote. So I'm just gonna connect the wires up to my supply here. This is a safety um, quick connect that I'm just using for uh, this test. So let's just hook it in. So that's it connected. And again, right now, I can turn this on and off using the button that's on here. It takes a moment for the, for the LED to react. The power supply has to turn on and then the LED controller uh, waits for stabilizing and then turns on and off. So off, on. So you can see there that's just manually working. And of course that's nothing impressive because you'd expect it to be manually working. Turn it off. So the next thing to do, of course, is to pair it up with the key fob. So we're already using B for the lamp. You should see that come on in the corner. Let me just turn that around so you can still see the lamp. There's the lamp. So I'm just going to press B. And this one actually has an LED in it that you can see. If I just press it again to cancel it, and I'll zoom in on the display. Let me just turn the lamp off again a second. So on the display here, right there, there's an LED underneath. If I just peel this label back a little bit, it's just stuck on the top. You can see that there is a, um, there you go. You've got an LED up here and you've got the button there. They're just underneath the label. 
So when I press the button twice quickly, you should see the red LED just start flash once to indicate that it's in pairing mode. All right, so one quick flash. And now if I go on the remote and press A and hold it pressed, you see the flashing of the controller to indicate it's done. Now it's flashing quickly. Uh, the slow flashing initially was to say that, yep, I'm, I'm learning this. And the fast flashing is now reflecting the serial data coming from the key fob into the 433 megahertz receiver that's built into this control unit. So I just let go. And now that's paired. So now when I press the A button, right, that'll bring the light on, the panel on. Now I'll press it again and off. So now let's just zoom out again. Okay, so I've set this up now with the key fob so that we can work lamp A. And that'll turn on the big LED panel and turn it off again. And we press button B now. And we'll bring on the CFL and press it again and turn it off. Perfect, just what we need. So now we can control two separate devices. So let's see what's involved in configuring the power brick to use on the smart device. And believe me, it's exactly the same. The, the basic electronics in both of these is the same. So um, there, you know, it's, it's the same process to add the second device. So I'm just gonna go in the smartphone, I'm gonna hit plus, and then tell it to start searching. And I'm gonna then press and hold the button on the um, power brick, the Sonoff, S on off controller until I see the device. So my smartphone's just connected to it. Now it's just going to register. There we go. So it's a different number up here because each one's unique. Got obviously going to have to have a unique number so that when they're communicating, they're going to work properly. Um, I'm going to pick the network I want to use, which is my Oaks Clan home. And I got a temporary password there, which again, I'm going to hide, but, uh, and then you just have to click next. It's going to register the device. I'm going to call this one um, LED because it's on the LED panel. All right, so I'm just calling this LED. And say next. And that's this one done. So now I have two devices in here that I can control. Now again, it's going away for just a few moments while it's registering the device, but it should come back in a moment and tell me that it's all working nicely. Now, one of the things that the manual says is if it doesn't show up properly um, signed in right away, then just disconnect the power to it, which is what I've just done here, and reconnect the power and that should initiate it to uh, go out and register, you know, re-register with the service. Once they're powered up, they, I haven't yet had an issue with them um, timing out or anything. So we're just waiting for this to come up online. And there we go, it's now online. See how it's the question mark and everything else has gone away. And now I can press the on button, give it a second, and it's going out. Now I haven't re-enabled my Wi-Fi yet. Oh, I just did it. Turn it back off again. I, <laughs> that's why it took a little longer to register because I turned my Wi-Fi off. So the Wi-Fi is now off, so it's connecting through the L LTE network. And again, you can actually hear the relay clicking as well when I'm doing this. And you can see the LED panel turning on and off in the background. All right. And if I just go back and then into the other one for the lamp, I can still turn that one on as well and you can see it coming on just in the side with the light brightening up and down. Let me just zoom out a little bit so you can see everything. There we go. So now lamp on, off, LED on and off. All right now again if I use the key fob I just bring this up closer so you can see. And remember, this is connected through A. I've turned it on. You can see it's immediately reflecting the status of that. Now, if I bring on the lamp as well, right, and then I flip, even though it's not in view right now, and flip into the lamp, you can see it's already reflecting on as well. 
So now uh, that's basically the operation of these two things. And as I say, I haven't got anything here except for initializing these two devices onto my Wi-Fi network so they can reach out to the cloud service that IT Studio is providing. And um, so I've got local control. I've got remote control from wherever in the world I am. As long as I'm connected to the internet, it's going to work. And I've also got the ability to schedule on off for these things with the smart device as well. So let's have a quick look at that. So I'm just going to show you it doing for um, put, setting up a schedule for the lamp. Um, it's the same for either one of them. So all you do is go into your smart app and press the schedule. And there's no timers currently set up. So you just press add timer. And you can have a turn on and a turn off time. You can have single timing. You can have repeat timing. I uh, can't see that too well. I don't think. No, nope. there. That better. Um, trying to get everything on a big screen here. There we go. So zoom in a little bit more so you can see everything. Right. So you've got turn on, turn off, and you've got single timing or you've got repeat timing. Um, you can repeat um, every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, you can set the time. So right now it's set for 20 um, for now. So if I set it to um, maybe just for, depends how quickly I can do this, a yes to that. And that's an on timer that I've set. So I've told it at 2051 to turn on. And let's just do all the day, see if I can get this all done before it actually flips to 2051. All right, so I've set that every day at 851 to turn on. Now, there you go, the lamp just turned on. So let's see if I can set another timer. Oh no, let's just edit that timer. And um, we'll set an off time, because we didn't set an off time. And we'll change it to the next minute. So if I can get this done quick enough, say yes. So now we're gonna turn off a minute later. So we'll just say complete. And let's just zoom out, that's now set. Let's just zoom out so we can see everything working. So in a matter of 60 seconds, and I may just skip part of this. So at 52, don't know if you can see that or not, but currently it's saying 51. So as soon as it hits 52, the lamp should automatically turn off without me pressing anything. And whilst you can't see my hands, I am not gonna press anything. We'll hopefully see this do it all on its own. 60 seconds is a long time while you're waiting for it. So we just hit 52 and there it goes, gone off. So that's remote scheduling and it's running on the cloud service so that even if your smart device is turned off, it will still talk to the Wi-Fi connected um, Sonoff and Slampfer, which is the lamp control and the brick control. So that's that. And that's pretty much all there all there is to these devices. Um, I guess the next thing is let's just have a little look inside them and see how well they're built. Um, and uh, that will be the completion of the video. But uh, I think everybody would want to know what they're like inside from a quality perspective and things like that. So let's go.